John Bennett here with Logic Pro X. And in this video, I'm going to talk about using buses and sends to make your mix a little more efficient. And this is something I'm fairly new to because, you know, I typically will just load my plugins that I want. I don't use a ton of plugins on stuff, but when it comes to vocals and some acapellas, I do rely pretty heavily on some plugins to really get the sound I want. And once you get a few of those going on your in your project and and it can really kind of put a hurting on your CPU things like that so I'm going to show you a more efficient way to do it this is a template I have that I usually open up and I start with these top three or four tracks here are the vocal the voiceover tracks that I typically will use <clears throat> and you can see they have they have several plugins on them and what happens is I'll, I'll do a vo voiceover. I usually duplicate the track, you know, so I end up getting a ton of these. So let's do, let's take this one. Let's take these actually. And this is another feature in Logic Pro X. You can highlight all the tracks you want to move. I'm going to drag them down to the bottom and you'll see why here in a minute. Okay. And then if you pop open any, let's just do a new track here, new audio track. And then we say, we want to send it to bus one. When you say you're going to send you bus something, think about it like you're just channeling all of the audio to another source and it's going to be filtered through that source. It's kind of like putting a plug in on it, but let me show you what happens. You do that. And then if we open up the mixer by pressing X, we now have this new auxiliary track that what this was not here before. Okay. And the reason it, it created that because there was no where to send that bus. So bus one is going to here, right? And I want this to be where I, instead of me creating duplicating tracks and, and doing these particular plugins, I want just to create a new track and bus it to it. So I'm going to drag these over here. Okay. And I don't need to echo anymore on that. I wasn't even using it. So I'm going to take that off. And now on that new track we made right here, audio three, that's being bust out. It's going to route through our auxiliary channel. Now it's not doing anything yet until you turn it on or turn up the, the amount. I just like to hit option and click it. It brings it to zero. So now it's going to go through. Another gotcha is that if you look here, sometimes when you create that auxiliary channel, this volume will be all the way down and it, you got to make sure it's the, the, that it's the volumes where right where it needs to be. So you've got that all going on. So now let's see what happens. As this is a vocal bus, I'm going to just bring in an acapella so we can kind of listen to see what, what it does. I just got this acapella here. I'm just going to drag it in. Let's solo this. And I'm going to turn the bus off first. So listen what we got. There's no plugins or anything on this. Dustin Tavella. Ella, Ella. <laughs> it's so nice to me, name. It's so, so here we go. Turn the bus on. It's so nice to me, me. Must be so nice to me, me. Ready, y'all? Turn up. Oh, and you wish you could be me. I know. But you wish you could be me. <laughs> okay. Very cool, right? But the cool thing is, is if I do another one, a new, another track, I can bust that one there too. So I only have, need to have one instance of this little setup that I'm going to use over and over again. And it becomes very helpful. The other big benefit to that is that you'll not get the system overload message from Logic ever really if you're doing it this way. Um, last ditch effort if you're getting system overload is to freeze some tracks. But if you do this properly, you should not, have, you should not be running into that unless you're on a pretty old machine. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.